Um, welcome back. Um, this is a continuation of my previous video on character design. Um, and we have now these sketches. Um, and I'm going to start coloring them and talk about um, my process with coloring characters and deciding on color palettes. So um, let's just jump right in. Um, I already have some color palettes picked out. And I'll talk about why I chose them um, and how you can sort of choose colors for your characters. So to keep in mind, whenever you're choosing colors, um, you want to keep in mind what the character does as far as, you know, who is the, like, what's their profession, what do they do. Um, so I have some bikers here. So obviously I'm going to choose, you know, like black or the black leather jackets and um, maybe blue for the blue jeans. Um, but you also want to keep in mind what your character's personalities are. The colors should reflect, you know, both what their background is and who they are as a person. Um, and you, and you can feel free also to sort of um, invert this and, and be surprising, you know, maybe. But in general, you want to, th those are the things you want to keep in mind. So I've got my color palettes. For this, um, I've chosen sort of dark colors because of the leather jackets and everything. Um, you definitely want to make sure you don't have all dark colors or all light colors. You want, just like any painting, you want to have a range of values with your colors um, or else it'll look the character will look flat. It'll look not as visually interesting as you want it to be. So I'm just going to get my brush. Um, when I'm coloring something simple like this, um, let's see, where is my line layer? Oh, here it is. So I've got my sketch. Um, whenever I'm just figuring out color palettes and stuff, um, I like to just magic wand tool this. So I'll do that. I'll get all these little spaces. Oop. You want to make sure. So I'll get all of, I'll select everything around the characters like this. And then I'll just um, select and then inverse so that it's selecting them. Uh, and from there, I can make a new layer underneath my sketch. Get my brush tool. And I'll just take an example color for my palette. So let's take this dark. This is for the jacket. But I'll just, whew, first of all, I don't want to have the opacity on like that. And then I want to have pretty much a, a hard brush. And I'll just color in the whole thing one color to start. Whoop. It also looks like we missed something. This is kind of happens when you're working with a sketch. You sort of get areas where you missed. Um, but then you can control D to deselect. And then I'll just come in and, and fill in this in. It's not a problem. So I'm filling this in, mostly just so it's easier to color the rest of the character, keep in the lines. Let's get a smaller brush. I'm just getting this. So this is sort of a base color. Um, one thing you want to keep in mind also is typically whenever you're doing a character design, you have sort of a primary color and a secondary color, um, and then some tertiaries. Um, you don't usually want to have more than maybe maximum of three, two or three main colors. Otherwise, it starts to look too busy and too hectic, and um, it's not cohesive. So I will lock the transparency on this layer so I can just start coloring all in one layer. This is my style. Some people do. Um, like a layer for each part, like a layer for the skin, layer for the jacket, layer for the pants. Um, honestly, I can't be bothered because I just like to work one layer if possible. So what I'll start doing is coloring in. And because I have the opacity locked on this layer, I don't have to worry about going outside of what I've already colored in. So I've got his sort of blue jeans here. And this is um, I chose these colors. These are the colors I chose because of, um, you know, what this character does and what his background is. So I've got a nice white. Typically, typically um, colors like black and white or will go pretty well with any other um, with any other colors. Um, 
so they don't really read as much as color, so you can kind of get away with putting, putting those in. Um, so I'm sort of doing that. I've got that. I've got a skin tone already kind of picked out. I'm just roughly coloring this in right now. I can go back later and clean up these lines. Got his hands here. There's really a lot you can kind of say about um, choosing color palettes. There's no, it's not really an exact science. It's you just sort of like anything really. Um, it's just trial and error, and you get you get better as you practice really. So I'm going in. So he's mostly going to be dark. Um, he's got the black leather jacket. He's got the blue jeans. Um, the only really but, but you still have lights here, see? You have the light of his shirt, which is, and also the light of his eyes. His skin, comparatively, is pretty light. I'm gonna be doing that. Um, so now I'm gonna go in, slightly lighter one, and make this. This is so that this collar pops, I have light, um, color like this, so it doesn't all fade in. Because the one thing that you don't want to ha have happen with your colors when you're um, coloring in a character is to have things, m m you know, fade into each other or um, mesh. Uh, you want things to pop. You want everything to be, you want the colors to enhance your lines um, as much as possible. You don't want things that pop out to pop out right. You don't want it all to just be one big blob. So I added that in, and I added that to just sort of make it pop. I'll do the same thing with the blue jeans with this lighter color as well. These little, the little place where it's rolled up, I'll make that a little bit lighter to show, hey, this is rolled up. This is the underside of the, the blue jeans. Um, and again, it's always a good idea to sort of limit your color palette whenever you're um, working. So I've got him kind of squared away, very basic. Now, whenever I was choosing the colors for um, the girl here, because they're similar, because they're characters that I designed together and they're meant to be seen together, their color palettes are gonna, um, their color palettes are going to complement each other. So, you know, sh I'm using the same black or dark gray. I'm gonna be using white as well here so they're gonna have they're gonna have shared colors that connect them, but there's gonna be some differences, and the way that they're used are different. See, he has this larger area of white on his torso, where she's gonna have this large area of white on her legs, um, and this also draws attention to her legs compared to the dark um, of her pants, and it's gonna um, you know draw attention to the fact that she's really tall, and she's really thin, and and her legs make up a lot of her. Um, a lot of her body, actually. Now, instead of blue here, though, I went with orange. Orange is, some, is a color that's a little bit more um, aggressive. Um, it's a warmer color, at least in this context. That's the thing. Um, the one thing that you have to keep in mind about colors with characters is all about context, and it's all about everything working together. Um, you know, I could say orange is aggressive here, but you know, in another context, it could be very soothing or very um, warm and inviting. So it, it all just depends. But I gave her orange here because he has the blue. So those are two sort of um, complementary colors to emphasize that these two characters are pretty different. Even while sharing some of the colors, you want you want the audience to know, hey, they're they're also um, pretty opposed as well. So I'm about done actually shading in these. I'm going to come in with the yellow. One thing also is you want to usually it's it's usually good practice to never just use your color in one small place. You want to have um, you want to have the colors 
um, used again and again throughout the design. So you have the hair, which is black, and also her pants that are black. You have her shirt that's orange, and also these bits of orange um, down here in the boots. Um, you have, you know, his shoes. I almost forgot to color his hair. His shoes and his hair both have the same brown color. This helps to kind of unify it and make sure that your character doesn't look like they're kind of all over the place. Um, you know, limited color palette goes a long way. Um, so from here, I mean, you can add shading as well. Um, usually I just pick a red or a purple. You can, also, you can choose any kind of color. Usually take a mid-tone right there in the middle. Um, I set the um, opacity down and I set it to multiply. Okay. And, um, oh, and I also make, let's see. I also like to create a clipping mask. So that way I don't go over, I did this wrong. <laughs> You make this a clipping mask. No. Anyway. You'll have this over the color layer. Multiply. And you can just start using this note. Oh, that's why it's not working. There we go. Yeah, you definitely want to make sure you're using the right tool. <laughs> now I can probably make this a clipping mask. So that way, you never have to worry about going outside um, of your lines or anything. But um, yeah, let's get rid of that for a second. Brush. And just going in, um, n I would say never use black, almost never use black to shade. It usually just looks dirty. Uh, and it's not really how, how real shadows work. Real shadows have some, some kind of color to them. Um, and it's really up to you, and it's affected by the light. But see, it, it looks a lot more vibrant whenever you have shadows um, with a color. Red usually, I like red because it usually looks good with most skin tones. Um, but yeah, red, purple, blue are usually my go-tos for um, shading a character. So I'm just sort of... So right now, um, my light source is from the top. That's what, I, what I'm going with. So I'm shading according to that. And I'm going like that. Shading in the ears, roughly. Usually I have below the knee I'll have all shaded in, because that's sort of a depression area. And this is just to give some uh, three-dimensionality to the characters. And I'll go back in and erase, clean up these lines. Then we can do the same for her. It's really quick. Um, but I think shading will often help a lot when, when you have that final vision of your character. And it really makes them pop. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of doing this, giving and again, it's, it's really nice to have colored shadows um, for things like this white area where it, it gives a hue, um, where you otherwise might just have had grayscale. So I'm going to give her sort of a shadow over her eyes. Because you can also, in the shading, imply their personalities as well. You know, he has a very open face. She is kind of shadowed. Basically, that is about it. 
Just sort of cleaning this up now. I'm using a, a soft sort of brush or eraser here, but uh, a hard one would do as well. It's not really, it's just up to your style. All right, and uh, we are about done. So, um, so yeah, um, I hope that that helped you. Um, and uh, just keep those things in mind whenever you're creating your character and coloring them. See you later.